Hi, my name is Robert Lucero. I'm a software developer, engineer, and test here over at Microsoft, and I work on the WebMatrix team. This is my colleague. Hi, my name is Simon Tan, and I'm a program manager on the WebMatrix team. And today, we're here to talk to you about WebMatrix extensibility. Extensibility is a new, great new feature in WebMatrix 2 that lets anyone add functionality to WebMatrix that we haven't put in yet. So today, I'll walk you through uh, how someone goes about installing extensions, and Bob will show you how to get started developing them. So now I'll show you how you can install extensions from inside WebMatrix. Here I have WebMatrix 2 running. I'll just open up one of my existing sites. And once you land in the site workspace of WebMatrix, you'll notice a button in the ribbon called a Gallery in the Extensions group. Clicking it will launch a dialog and show you all the available extensions in our Extension Gallery. The extension gallery is the same list of extensions as you'll find on the extensions gallery website. Now it's just a matter of choosing an extension. Um, I think we'll choose zip backup, which sounds like it will back up our site in, into a zip file. Click install. Accept the license agreements. And you'll see here at the bottom that the uh, extension zip backup was installed. So now you'll notice a button has appeared in the ribbon called Zip Backup. If I click it, it prompts me for the name of a zip file. I'll just call it Backup. And then it proceeds to make a backup of my site. And there it looks like it completed. Um, I can click here to open the location of the backup. Then I can see the file was created. Let's take a look at another extension from the gallery. Hmm. The color theme manager is a really nice extension for those of you who want to customize your editor. Let's take a look. So with the color theme editor extension, you can change the colors used by the editor. So if the colors are not to your liking, all you have to do is check out the um, selection of colors you can edit in the Color Theme Manager. For example, if I wanted a darker background color, I could just choose that, apply it, and you can see that my editor background color is now black. If this change is not what I really wanted, I can reset the colors to defaults. Now, if you've installed a lot of extensions and you don't need them anymore, you can actually uninstall them via the same extensions gallery. So going back to the site workspace, the extensions gallery, you can go to this installed section and uninstall the ones you do not need. Now, you'll notice that if you have disabled or uninstalled extensions, WebMatrix needs to be restarted for the changes to take effect. So once we close and reopen WebMatrix, that extension will be, be gone. So now we're going to take a look at uh, how to build your own extension with Visual Studio and WebMatrix. Uh, Bob here will walk us through the steps. I'm going to quickly go through an overview on how to start with the WebMatrix Visual Studio uh, extension project. So here we have uh, Visual Studio, and all I'm going to do is which is a web matrix extension. If you haven't already, you can look below for one of the links. It should be a link to where you can download this web matrix extension. We'll leave the name as it is. We'll just start off. So the first thing that you'll see here is you'll see a tab talking about how to set up uh, web matrix debugging of your extension. And by default, these extensions are just DLLs and we'll need to have them hosted inside of web matrix for them to be debugged. So step number one is to right click on your solution. You're gonna to wanna to select properties and we're gonna to choose to start an external program. This setting is set inside of the debug tab. We're gonna browse the file system to find web matrix. It's generally located in your program files, x86 folder for those of you who are using 64-bit operating systems. It's listed underneath web matrix and we'll select web matrix executable. 
Once that's done, we'll click save and close this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the CS file that has the basic extension. I'm going to go ahead and clear the Solution Explorer properties and output. Okay, so now that we've configured WebMatrix to launch when the extension is built, I'm going to quickly highlight what this extension does. Basically, it's pretty simple. There's two images that are used for the ribbon button that we're going to add. We basically initialize a ribbon button here. We add it to a ribbon item collection here, which we add it to a ribbon item group. This is the simplest way of adding buttons to the web matrix ribbon. Below is what uh, action the button will do when it is clicked. Here, all we're going to do is ask the user, do you want to open up a browser for this website? We take the website's path and we hand that out to process start. Fairly straightforward. So now that we've kind of reviewed it, let's go ahead and launch it. So now WebMatrix is still launching. It's opened up uh, the default website that we've chosen to select. And here at the top, we have My Button. When you click My Button, it asks you the question. If you choose to launch it, um, it'll open it up in whatever browser that you have specified. For now, let's click Cancel, and let's close WebMatrix. So the next thing we're going to do is we're basically going to show you how to add another ribbon button. Uh, to make this a little easier, I've copied the code off to the side. We'll add the item. So essentially here, what we have is we have a ribbon button. We have the name of the ribbon button. We have the delegate command that's going to execute. Essentially, a delegate command is a way for the web matrix command manager to execute your code. We're going to add the test action, the action that's going to happen when the button is clicked. The other options you can leave as null. Essentially, there's command parameters, objects that you want to pass to your method that you want executed. And we are not going to specify any images. So null is bitmap image, just is setting our pictures to the web matrix default. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the action that we want executed. Again, I'm going to copy it over. It makes it a lot easier. Here we've added it. So it's essentially a mirror image of what you see above. It's simply uh, a method. It takes your object parameter. You can pass the parameters. Here we've set it to null, uh, as listed above. What we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to use the web matrix host, which is the default object that you get once you create a web matrix extension. We're going to use the internal show dialog. We're going to basically ask the user, do you want to open up Windows Explorer for additional file management. Just launch Windows Explorer for this path. We're going to use the web matrix host object to get the website's folder path. This is the actual like internal folder path. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to just shell that out to process start. When the user clicks it, it's going to pass that to Explorer. Explorer is going to open up the folder that we passed to it. So let's try it again. Let's debug this thing and see if it works. Now with Web Matrix launched, you'll see two things. You'll see the original button listed here, and you'll see the test button that we've added. By default, if you don't specify an image, we'll give you this kind of standard little gear as a, as a default image to work with until you set up your own really cool icon. For now, we're going to click the button. It's going to ask us, do you want to launch Windows Explorer for the path? It picks up the path from the web matrix host object. You'll click OK. And here off to the side, it shows uh, basically the folder for where my website is. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to close web matrix and talk about one last thing. Essentially, you can do any number of really cool things here. Don't limit yourself to things like ribbon buttons or things like that. There's other really neat extensibility points, things like editor extensibility, where you can insert and modify text in the web matrix editor. You can extend our context menu by adding your own commands. They're spe specified to folders and files, as well as you do other really cool things that maybe even we haven't thought of.
thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you came up with a lot of cool ideas for web matrix extensions, and I hope you saw how easy it is to develop against the web matrix extensible platform. Um, there are plenty of really cool resources that will help you get unblocked. Please feel free to visit microsoft.com slash web or webmatrix.com for additional information and documentation, as well as forum help from people and members of the product team. We hope you have as much fun building those extensions as we have in building WebMatrix.